Clopidogrel can be used to reduce the platelet aggregation, and it can be used in many of the cardiovascular complications that are associated with increased risk of bleeding. It can be given to the people with recent myocardial infarction, stroke, or for people with established peripheral arterial disease. It can also be used to reduce the risk of bleeding in people with coronary artery disease. Therefore, this medication can be used in all the conditions where platelet aggregation is possible that arrest the blood flow. In this video, let's discuss key facts about this medication. Now let's see how it works. Clopidogrel is a medication that belongs to thionopyridines. It helps in inhibiting the platelet activation as well as aggregation. Platelets are activated by many of the factors, and among them, adenosine diphosphate is one of the pathways that activates and produces platelet aggregation. This results in the formation of clots and arrest of blood flow. On the platelets, few receptors are expressed, which are purinergic in nature. That means they are activated by substances that have a purine-like structure. Adenosine diphosphate is a type of purine that can bind to these receptors, resulting in their activation. This produces platelet activation, which stimulates their aggregation. So, on action of ADP on the platelet surface, it promotes platelet activation and aggregation, leading to the formation of a clot that arrests the blood flow. This process is blocked by clopidogrel. This medication selectively blocks these ADP receptors on the platelets. It produces an irreversible inhibition of ADP binding to these purinergic receptors present on the platelets, leading to inhibition of platelet activation and aggregation. However, this action is not mediated directly by clopidogrel. The antiplatelet activity of this medication is mainly mediated by its active metabolite formed in the liver. Now let us see the dosage of this medication. Clopidogrel is available as a tablet at two different strengths. One is at a low strength, such as 75 mg, and another one is at a high dose, such as 300 mg. This high dose of clopidogrel can be used as a loading dose in a few conditions that require an immediate antiplatelet action particularly in people with acute coronary syndrome who are having unstable angina, a non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, a loading dose is required. In such people, 300 mg of clopidogrel can be given initially to produce immediate antiplatelet action. Without this loading dose, this antiplatelet activity cannot be observed immediately. Followed by the loading dose, a daily dose of 75 mg per day, can be given for up to 12 months to maintain antiplatelet activity. However, in older people with ages above 75 years, loading doses may not be used because of the increased risk of bleeding. Clopidogrel can also be used in the prevention of recent myocardial infarction, stroke, and established peripheral arterial disease, where it can be used at a dose of 75 mg per day. Precautions Clopidogrel can inhibit the platelet aggregation, therefore, it can increase the risk of bleeding which can be further enhanced by a few of the other risk factors. If you are using other anticoagulants like warfarin or thrombin inhibitors, the risk of bleeding may be increased. Using other antiplatelet agents can also increase the hemorrhage. Particularly if you are using low-dose aspirin, which acts as an antiplatelet agent, it can increase the risk of bleeding when it is combined with clopidogrel. Particularly people with transient ischemic attack or stroke are at high risk for recurrent ischemic events. In such people, the combination of aspirin and clopidogrel may not be that much more effective compared with the use of clopidogrel alone. Instead, the risk of bleeding may be increased. Similarly, the risk of bleeding can also be enhanced by the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are the pain relievers that can be used to control the pain in many of the conditions. They may be used for longer periods. With chronic use of pain relievers, they can inhibit the platelet aggregation by inhibiting the COX pathway, cyclooxygenase pathway. Particularly, they inhibit the synthesis of prostaglandin I2 and E2. This results in the inhibition of platelet aggregation, leading to a decreased clotting process. Therefore, with chronic use of NSAIDs, the risk of bleeding can be increased with the use of clopidogrel. This medication is given to you to reduce the clotting and increase the blood flow. Therefore, any other factors that are going to increase the blood flow can increase the risk of bleeding. At the same time, when you're going to stop this medication again, the clotting process may be activated due to the increased platelet activation and aggregation. Therefore, you should not stop this medication before the completion of its course. There is a sensitive balance between the clotting process and the bleeding process. 
Therefore, you have to use this medication as it is prescribed to you by your doctor. Premature stopping of therapy may result in stent thrombosis. This may affect your heart, and it will produce either fatal or non-fatal myocardial infarction. Therefore, clopidogrel should be completely used for the duration that is going to be prescribed. In case it is to be temporarily discontinued, then it should be restarted as early as possible to prevent its fatal effect on thrombosis. Use of clopidogrel can produce a few of the hypersensitive reactions. This may result in the development of skin rashes, and in a few people, it can also produce angioedema. This results in the swelling of lips, throat, and tongue. These hypersensitive reactions are common with this group of medications that inhibit platelet aggregation. Therefore, when you're taking clopidogrel, you should be careful to monitor any development of hypersensitive reactions. Clopidogrel is also associated with a few of the hematological adverse reactions. Even though these are rare, they can produce serious complications. One such type of reaction is neutropenia. It is a reduction in the number of neutrophil counts due to the use of clopidogrel. It can also produce thrombocytopenia, resulting in the reduction of the number of platelets. Aplastic anemia is another condition where the bone marrow fails to produce sufficient blood cells, leading to weakness and fatigue. Sometimes after a short exposure to clopidogrel for around less than two weeks, it can produce a condition called thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. It is rare but a serious condition that requires urgent treatment with plasma exchange. It is a condition where small blood clots are formed in the blood vessels. This results in a reduction in the platelets and leads to damage to the particular organ. It may be associated with thrombocytopenia, decreased platelet count. Renal dysfunction and fever can also be observed. However, this reaction is rarely observed with clopidogrel. Clopidogrel is a prodrug. It is going to be metabolized in the liver, and it produces an active metabolite that is responsible for its antiplatelet activity. The metabolism of clopidogrel is mediated by cytochrome P450 enzymes. Among these, CYP2C19 plays an important role. It mainly converts the clopidogrel into its active metabolite. Therefore, any other medications that are affecting the activity of this enzyme can influence the metabolism of clopidogrel. A few of the proton pump inhibitors, like omeprazole, can inhibit the CYP2C19 enzyme. This results in the decreased metabolism of clopidogrel, which increases its levels in the body. This may increase the risk of bleeding. Therefore, when you're taking proton pump inhibitors, you may use other less interacting drugs and try to avoid omeprazole. Omeprazole is a moderate CYP2C19 inhibitor and reduces the pharmacological activity of clopidogrel. However, pantoprazole is a weak inhibitor of this enzyme. Therefore, when you have to take proton pump inhibitors, you may consider taking pantoprazole while using clopidogrel. Few of the people can also act as the poor metabolizers of clopidogrel due to the decreased activity of this CYP2C19 enzyme. This may result in the decreased formation of the active metabolite of clopidogrel, leading to reduced antiplatelet activity. Therefore, in such people, this medication may not be effective even at the normal doses. In such conditions, the dose may be individualized in such people due to variation in the metabolic enzyme capacity. Clopidogrel can inhibit the platelet aggregation for the lifetime of platelets. Normally, the lifetime of the platelet is variable from 7 to 10 days. Therefore, stopping the dose for 7 to 10 days may not be useful in managing the bleeding events immediately. It may result in the risk of bleeding. So in order to restore the hemostasis immediately, platelets can be administered externally. Therefore, in case of serious bleeding with the use of clopidogrel, an external administration of platelets may reverse the condition. Now let us see the side effects produced by this medication. Clopidogrel is associated with upper respiratory tract infections. So with the use of this medication, you may have flu-like syndrome. You may also have rhinitis and a runny nose. It can also produce chest pain and joint pains. You may have a headache and diarrhea. Few people can observe skin rashes. Rarely, it can produce muscle pains. It can also produce urinary tract infections in a few people. Bleeding is one of the important side effects produced by this medication. At very high doses, it can produce side bleeding. If you have any gastrointestinal disorders, high use of clopidogrel may increase the risk of bleeding. Therefore, 
Gastrointestinal bleeding can be enhanced in conditions like pancreatitis, colitis, stomatitis, and even gastric ulcers. You may have taste disorders, headaches, confusion, and hallucinations. Use of clopidogrel is ineffective if any genetic variation is suspected. Rarely, it can produce muscle pains. That's all, guys. This is all about the important information you should know about this medication, clopidogrel. Thanks for watching this video. Share your experience and how it works for you in the comment section below. Have a great day.